Okay, everyone, welcome back. Uh, while the area we're in actually says the Calyx, Zavid had mentioned that this is actually Hexen, uh, which, which was in Zestiria. So I'm not entirely sure whether we should call it that or the Calyx, but we're here. And, you know, I was, I was thinking between episodes, you know, we have so technically we have Zavid and number one now with us. I believe they should still be with us anyway. And so, who is number one? What name are they going to give him later? And I couldn't help but wonder, it's like, are we just going to name him, um, uh, Diesel? Or Dezel, I'm sorry. And, uh, that's where he came from. He doesn't really look like it to me, so I don't really think so, but that was my, my first thought. So, who knows who he is, really? But, oh my gosh. This brings back some memories from Zestiria, definitely. Oh my goodness. Oh, you seem awfully chipper, Velvet. I'm fine. And I guess I have you to thank as well. Perhaps. But gratitude doesn't suit you. Now, say ah. Uh. Huh? I need to see your teeth. What? I need a hundred gold bet that you break, remember? So, I need to see if you've broken anything. Let's start with those teeth. Help us out, kiddo. All right. I just need to check our front teeth, right? Front teeth, canines, whatever. Just get in there and take a good hard look. You didn't mean that literally, did you? Why are you making me do the checking? Acting the innocent maiden, are we? Well, I suppose that some say that showing the inside of your mouth can be more personal than being seen naked. What? <laughs> Seriously? Magilu, you're only making this even more awkward. Come now, will you cooperate or not? We can't settle the bet until we know the tooth. Fine, but let's check the ones in my left hand first. Good. I believe Bienfu can assist with that. <laughs> Why me? Leave me out of this! Bien! <laughs> She's squeezing me! Ouch! Those fangs hurt! <laughs> Looks like Velvet is just fine. Yeah, the sparks returned to her eyes. But, uh, is showing the inside of your mouth really that embarrassing? What? Keep your intrusive questions to yourself. Wow. Hopefully none of them ever have to go to the dentist. Because apparently it's super awkward. The size of the art that created this place. Just what is the Abbey planning to use it for? Whatever it is, they're trying hard to keep it hidden. Can't be anything good. No, probably not. I don't think I'm going to be coming back here, so, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and abandon them. I don't like leaving closed treasure chests. So sad. Oh, hey, actual enemies. Excuse me. Don't get overcome. <laughs> Are you hurt? Can you stand? All right. This weird floating elephant head still around here. So weird. Always ready to fight. Did. Let's go check out this treasure chest. Oh boy! Elixir! No, leave me alone! Busy! I can't quite remember, but I'm wondering if this is in fact even the, the exact same map, because it feels like it's the exact right. same map. Who was that kid anyway? 
He and I used to be tethered to an exorcist named Lady Teresa. He was number one, I was number two. Oh, -ho, a friend of yours then. So he went feral after that Teresa lady fell. Yeah. I found Velvet and the others, but he probably had nowhere to go. A stray Moloch stripped of his free will won't go much further than a demon's belly. Anyway, seems like the only people I run into these days are kids. I'm more in the market for an unattached woman with a pretty face. Um, sorry? <laughs> I'm just fooling around. Grow a sense of humor, kid. Anyway, relax. I'll keep an eye on him until he's in command of himself again, all right? Just one more reason to bring the Abbey down. Right. Thanks, Savid. That just makes me wonder if it is, in fact, supposed to be Dezel. But... Whether it is or not, that's still awesome. He's so sweet to take care of him. Don't get overconfident. I'm just close. I won't miss. Form zero. That all you got is We're finished here. Let's go. Okay. See the exit over there, or at least, you know, the entrance to another area over there. No, leave me alone, floating elephant. Hey, Luffy said. Can you think of a good name for the kid? You're giving number one a name? Yeah. He says he can't remember his true name, and calling him by a number seems mean, you know? Yeah. I was really happy when Velvet gave me my name. Hey, I've got this. How about Hajime? It means the first, and he's number one, right? In that case, why not just go with Ichiro? No way. That was Shigure's childhood name. Why should that matter to us? It should be softer. How about Ichi? Or maybe something like Numbi? 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 Where'd that one come from? It's like number, but uh, more cute. Let's just forget that one. I don't think we should reference his old number at all. Um, how about Bob? Bob! <laughs> um, is that just because of his hairstyle? That's really reaching. Actually, I kind of like it. If it's too plain, how about Bobby? Hmm. That isn't bad. Right? Then number one is hereby renamed... Stop it, you two! You don't understand it at all! A boy doesn't want a name that sounds cute! You... you don't think so? That was quite an outburst. <laughs> <laughs> the kid has a point. We need something with more panache. How about Silva? Silva? His hair and pendant both silver. I like it. It's got a certain mystique about it. Silva. Yeah, it sounds cool. Well, if his old buddy Laffy said approves, then Silva it is. Well done, first mate. Praise from you is wasted on me. Huh. <laughs> then consider it praise from Silva instead. Right. Time to go give him the good news. Hey, the Moloch formerly known as number one. You've got a new name. I'm glad he got a good name. Maybe we should have put a little more thought into naming you, too. That's all right. You need to steer your own ship. Right, Aizen? You're the one who taught me that. <laughs> you know just what to say, don't you? Moloch, formerly known as number two. <laughs> okay, so Silva it is. Not a name that I know, but that's all right. In fact, actually, that's very strange for me because that's the uh, name of a co-worker's cat. <laughs> but... Magilu, what were you up to while we were lost in the Earth Pulse? I was ringing the bell. The rift was open the whole time. Couldn't you hear me? I don't remember hearing any bells. She was fighting with Lord Melchior. She really gave it her all. Bianfu, don't give him the wrong impression. 
But you endured so much. It was... It was so moving. Yes, yes, I did endure. It was so hard not to laugh. Did the old man tell you a joke or something? It was a staring contest. And oh, the faces that old man can make. I kept picturing him as a young man, but with that same wrinkled face, and it was so hard not to crack. <laughs> I needed to keep myself in check. My desire to laugh was only broken by the ringing of the bell. Clang! Crash! What a thrill! Wait, was that the only thing that broke Moggy Lou? Are you asking if he broke my heart? Like I'm fishing for sympathy? That's not what I meant at all. You stood watch over the Earth Pulse Rift for us. I didn't say that. Stop trying to give me a participation medal. Just take it. After all, you don't care either way, right? True that. All right. It'll be interesting if they ever, like, really figure out more about her. But if they don't, you know, she can keep her secrets. Okay, anything, anything? Nope. All right. Oop, anything? Big circle, no. What is that? Oh dear! Dragon. It looks like it's been captured. Just like the Therians. But why would they hold a dragon captive? Hmm. An art connects this place to the Earth Pulse. That's probably why we were taken here. Earth Pulse. So it's got something to do with the Nominat? That would be the obvious conclusion. I don't get it. Explain. Small words. <laughs> Very well. You're part of all this, too. Velvet. I'm fine now. I promise. All right. I see. You found out Inominat's true identity. So, now that you know, can you still fight him? It's only given me more reason to kill him. And the Shepherd. You're one ice-cold girl. There's still one thing bothering me. Inominat needs to eat malevolence to awaken. Once he does, he'll use his power to suppress negative emotions. But when humans can't create any more malevolence, what will happen to Inominat? He'll run out of things to eat. And maybe die? Hmm. Wouldn't he just go back to sleep? But if he does, then his power will fade and humanity will start creating malevolence again, right? In order for Inominat to eternally suppress negative emotions... He needs an infinite, powerful source of malevolence to feed off of. For example, that produced by an immortal dragon. Which would make this place a sort of dragon farm. Yep. Created so he could control humanity forever. You can't be serious. Just speculation, but it all makes sense. They can't think of Malakim as anything but tools. Just how much will they sacrifice for their ideal world of tranquility? Oh, a lot. We don't dare... Oh, oops. What was it that I believed in all that time? The image I'd built of the Abbey is crumbling from the bottom up. Please cheer up, Madam Eleanor. You'll make me depressed, too. Is this about the dragon farm? Yes. I strongly doubt even the Abbey has the power to manipulate dragons so freely. Then that dragon... Wasn't a dragon before it came here? Probably not. That's the natural assumption. They probably brought the Malakir as a captive then turned him into a dragon. Just like Melchior did, eh? Is there no line they won't cross? I don't know what to say. It's not your fault, Madame Eleanor. But spawning dragons in addition to Therians. Do you think they'll figure out a way to make humans too? Yes. Wait, that's awful. I can't believe you went there. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm really, nothing would surprise me at this point. Now, we can't, we can't mess with that, right? No, okay, good, because I don't want to mess with that. Even though I, I want to set it free, jeez. But there's not a lot that we can do with it being all bound up like that.
So much stuff I have to leave behind. Honestly, though, as pretty as this place is, it's mostly just depressing. something mystical feathered garment I do wish that more games would actually change your outfits when you changed armor that's always fun and all I can imagine is what mystical feathered garments look like velvet what is it I was once your sister's child, right? Then my father is... Look, you were reborn, right? Yeah. Honestly, I really don't know anything about how being reborn works. But to me, what you see, what you hear, and what you feel, that's what's important. Whoever we used to be in another life, I'm me now, and you're you. That's all there is to it. Velvet. That's true. Aizen said that not all Malakim are humans who have been reborn, right? Does that mean they could be reincarnations of birds or fish or beasts? That's not, 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 not true! So, if a boy was a dog in a past life, that wouldn't make him part of the dog's family now. Yeah. I'm me, I guess. But you're Velvet's cute little pup, aren't ya? Mogilu. Be careful. I bite. I take it all back, just don't bite me! Rebirth is like the Earth in Historia. You're simply built on a larger foundation. But that's not special. Everyone's lives are founded on the past. So, I'm just me. Yep. You're you, and no one else. You're Fee. And I probably would not want to consider myself to be in any way related to that butt face at all get artorias hey first mate who is that horned demon with the old man i don't know i thought i felt something different about him only for just a moment do you feel it too i said i don't know i see <laughs> you're impossible you know that we've come across him before but we never really fought him my guess is Melchior is controlling him with some sort of illusion. I see. Then it's probably good you didn't fight. A straight battle against him wouldn't be an easy thing. How do you know that? Intuition. I have a nose for these things. There's something fishy about him. That scar on his face. It couldn't be. What's the matter, Aizen? You've gone pale. Forget it. It's nothing. We need to get out of here. Let's go. 
Yeah, but I'm still going on the assumption that that's Eifried. Which definitely sucks. to head up or down another level. I'm not sure what direction we're actually going in. Oh! We made it! I came here by ship. It's anchored by the southeast beach. And there is a turtles. How convenient. Hexen Isle is, uh, so much less horrible at this point. All right, there's also a Code Red Demon here, so let's do that first. Leave me alone! Actually, let me see if there's anything... My expedition has returned. I knew this would be big. Oh what my treasure. gosh, it's the key of Lorelei! Oh well. <laughs> the replica key. <laughs> That's cool. Uh oh crap. What happened? <laughs> we used to play tag all the time. Oh, good grief. Go away. I won't let you get away, Velvet. You know me not. That was the whole reason I took him from Teresa. It's just another necessary sacrifice for peace. Oh, come on! Inominat, you monster! Inominat to the front of us, a dragon to the back of us. Reaper's curse doesn't begin to describe it. What a shame. Is that despair I sense? Not on your life. It'll take more than this to make your big sister break. The more you resist, the more you'll suffer. Yeah, well. Velvet, let me punish this rotten little delinquent. You're just a Malak. You don't stand a chance. I'm not just any Moloch. And I'm sick of murdering scum like you. I know no limits. Oh my god. For I am Sabine. Sabine. This is officially too damn much. We'll be fine. Take them out one by one. Well, crap. Only I've been on larger Hurt. 
fighting him is not exactly easy. Not that I want to, by any stretch. Ow! Hey! Come on, get behind. I don't I don't want to be here. I want to be behind you. Oh, okay. He's healing himself. Stop that dummy. We need to bring him down in one push. Zafid! I told you you would suffer. Zafid. I'll hold off, you know me not. Everyone else? Take out that dragon. There's no way you can face him alone. At least let me assist you. This isn't an order. It's strategy. I'm counting on you, Fee. He's so brave! For something that's a mere part of me, you're awfully uppity. I miscalculated before. I won't hold back this time. And neither will we. Oh, goody. It's a gamble. Hi, man. You too. You stay out of this. Your dumb coin always lands on skull. Then you'll just have to flip it over. Come on. At least he's not having an easy time guarding this time. Out of there in time for that. I will give myself a gel. Yeah. 
Come on. Come on. You talk big, but you're struggling even to protect yourself. <laughs> if you apologize now, I'll make sure it doesn't hurt when I devour you. No way I'm apologizing. Not to some jerk who doesn't understand how velvet feels. And you're saying that you do? She's my sister. I know everything, but I won't tell you. So be it. If I devour you, we'll be one again anyway. The compass. She isn't yours! Yeah! That's right. You got punched in the face. Velvet is velvet! And you're just a fragment of me! Guys, look out! So that was your strategy. Hey, give us more warning! You almost roasted us alive! <laughs> Now, I'll turn you into a dragon. See who's left in What's going on? What is going on? Red Demon, I want to fight. Excuse me, do I have a say in this? <laughs> Apparently not. They got away. A silver flame. A strange art that Moloch used. Did you forget that you have the power to digest malevolence? That thing may be a fragment, but it's still part of you. But the dragon attacked me. If it hadn't disrupted my concentration like that, I never would have let my fragment lay a finger on me. So long as you learn from your mistake, such a ruse won't work a second time. After all, Malakim are mere servants of the Empyreans. As long as we stay wary, they pose no threat to our ideal world. Your awakening is nearly complete. None within your domain can stand against you without the power of the four elemental Empyreans. And they are fast asleep, far beneath the earth. Boxes. Well, let's go wake them up then. I'm going after them. No, not now. We need to make preparations for the ceremony of suppression. We'll send this one after them instead. A demon? Will he be reliable? True, he can be hard to control. Even after he succumbed to demonhood, he withstood my illusions for seven days and nights. Even now, he resists on an instinctual level. However, he used to be known as the most fearsome yep. pirate in all the seas. His strength is equal to any legates. You, capture the Therion Velvet. Do whatever you have to, as long as you keep her alive. Wait. First. First, kill him. Kill Lafisette. 
before my sister's eyes. He's the only thing keeping her from falling to despair. It's true. Demon or not, he still possesses an odd sort of pride. I'll have to relieve him of such a meaningless burden. Ew. Uh, and he's also a vampire. Well, that made for good training, at least. We fought an Armatus, an Empyrean, and a dragon. It's a miracle we're still alive. It's all thanks to Fee. He's still asleep. He must have used all his physical and mental strength. <sighs> Poor little baby. The fire that burns away malevolence. That's quite the talent he's got there. Is it because he's part of Inomi Not? Sure could be. In one sense, that's a lucky break for us. But on the other hand... <sighs> anyway, I lost that bet. And I was so sure I was gonna win, too. Awful lot of drama you're making over 100 gold. Don't you dare laugh off 100 gold! One with no respect for gold will be by 20 lions mauled. Everyone knows that. Right. Anyway, what do we do next? Nothing's changed. We seal Inomi not away and kill Artorius. Even if Inomi not has awakened, there must be a way to seal him back again. Our best lead is still Grimoire's ancient book. We should meet up with Benwick and the others. Are you sure you want to stay with us? I don't know if it's the right choice or not. But I refuse to believe Lord Artorius is right. That sacrifices are inevitable bumps on the road to a better world. That's why I'll do what I believe is right and fight him. Even if I'm wrong, I won't have any regrets. Do you have any idea how frustrating you are? You're one to talk. Aizen, get in touch with Benwick and the others. That demon. It had to have been. Aizen? I think we need a break more than anything. That was a long stretch of battle. Seconded. Besides, the boy and Zavid aren't waking up anytime soon. Let's find a place to sleep for tonight. Eleanor, look after Lafayette. Maybe you ought to carry him. He did all this for you. Please. Very well. No if more compass. Carry the poor kid. Damn, damn, you're, damn you're cold. No, quite the opposite. Yeah, she doesn't want to, you know, have her malevolence all over him. I get that. Let's save again, because good grief. Who knows, next time we're gonna have a battle and get attacked by dragons. Have I killed anything since the last time I spoke to you? Oh, well, at least you have new... Ooh, Wanton Devil. It, it's on Titania? Well, okay. Let me see. What do we... Back to reality. Okay, we're supposed to rest at the inn. Alright. Don't see anything else here. What's going on with you guys? There's no future for me in a place like Indian. I'm gonna go to the capital and make a name for myself. I don't need any excitement in my future. I just want to live a nice, peaceful life. Aww. I'm glad you didn't win that bet, Mogilu. Sure, you're glad, but what witch would be happy at losing? And you pampered Velvet like crazy! It's your fault I lost! Really? I don't remember doing anything. Nope, wasn't us. <laughs> Staying out of it is just as bad! If you don't throw salt or sugar into an open wound, you're guilty of being too nice! I lost the bet because of you. You owe me. In that case, let us get in on the action. Let's make another bet. Oh, I'm listening. I'll bet 10,000 gold that Velvet cracks. Oh! I'll make that same bet. 
10,000. Uh-huh. Hey, wait a minute! You both know that I'm the one who wants to bet that she cracks! Then you should have spoken up first. We can call the whole thing off if you want. No, no. What kind of gambler would I be if I back down now? I'm afraid I have to take that bet. I hereby bet 10,000 that Velvet doesn't crack. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? For someone so stubborn, you can be surprisingly cute sometimes. You're calling a witch cute? That's slander! You both owe me the money you bet as reparations! <laughs> she can be kind of adorable. I'll grant her that. Oh my, you look absolutely exhausted. Hurry to your room and get some rest. Why, thank you. Oh no, creepy dreams again. So, should I think of you as my sister? I'm a Moloch named Ceres. I've inherited Selica's memories, that's all. And that doesn't make you the same person? What exactly defines a person's identity? I may have her body and her memories, but... <sighs> You're right. If your soul has changed, you're not the same person anymore. Even if I were Selica, I don't have the right to be called your sister. I followed Artorius's orders without question, sacrificing my own flesh and blood. What about me? I devoured you. I have no right to condemn you for what you've done. There's a difference, Velvet. I wanted you to do it. Even had I survived, I would have given myself to you before long. I wanted you to have my power, no matter the cost. But why? Right after the advent, Selica's memories returned to me. It was then I understood what exactly it was I had done. Arthur, kind and caring, transformed into the cruel Artorius he is now. Why did your memories return? I don't know. I've heard that very rarely Malakim can regain the memories of their previous lives. Or perhaps this is my punishment for the pain I brought to you all. The stronger I feel my love for Arthur, the less I can forgive Artorius. My hatred of him has grown so deep, I'm not Selica anymore. As Ceres, I can never bring back the Arthur that I loved. Neither do I have the power to defeat Artorius. But you can. You're a Therian. You fully absorbed my power. You can face the Shepherd. I know. I will stop him. Forgive me, Velvet. I've pushed everything onto you. My hatred, my determination. I wanted to apologize one last time at the end. I'm glad I had a chance to know you. I'm glad that once I could be Lofi's sister. And Selica and Arthur's sister as well. I was happy. That's nice. She at least for once didn't have a horrible nightmare. <sighs> but she is definitely being consumed a bit by malevolence. Velvet. Should you be up so soon? Yeah, but... Stay back. It's finally come to this, but of course it did. After all, I chose my revenge over a world of peace. I can't complain if people call me the Lord of Calamity. Velvet, whether you're human, demon, or Lord of Calamity, it doesn't change that you have beautiful hair. Aww.
Lafi said the same thing to me a long time ago. He gave me this comb. Your heart, I can tell it aches. Yes. But even still, no. Because of that, I've made up my mind. I'm going to settle things with Artorius and Inominat once and for all. It must be done. For my sake, and for the sake of those I loved. I will too. Even without my compass, I'll place my hand on the wheel and chart my own course. I will defeat Artorius. But if I kill Inominat, Lafi said, and me and the other Therians, they'll all. A compass. Hmm. Are, seriously, are we getting to a fight? Why the hell didn't you say something? Oh. Hmm. Calm down. You were passed out at the time, okay? I'm going. I've got to stop him. What's going on? We got a message from the Von Eltia. That's great. Is everyone okay? Yeah. For now. Huh? While Benwick and the others were making their getaway, they got word that Eifried was spotted in Endgale. They said they're on their way to Lionel Island to meet him. That has to be. Yes, a trap. No doubt set by that horned demon, who may even be Eifried himself. Eifried is a demon? Are you serious? I said may. Let's head to Lionel Island. Whoever it is, it's a lead. Besides, we can't afford to lose the Von Eltia. How will we get there? Zavid probably sailed off with the ship we came in on. We'll steal one from the harbor. I may be a calamity, but I'm frugal. <laughs> well. Curse, curse it all. If only I'd, if only notice, I'd sooner. notice sooner. Prince Percival safely made it back to the capital. The Abbey used everything they had to rescue him. I heard he was kidnapped by the Lord of Calamity. So if they got him back, that demon must be... Dead. Along with all of her gang. That's what a friend of mine in the Royal Army told me anyway. The Abbey's propaganda at work again, I see. We're finally safe! Hurrah! Hold up, hold up. From what I hear, no one knows if the Lord of Calamity actually gave up the ghost. Her hideout got destroyed, but some say she managed to escape. What makes them think she escaped? Fishermen from Port Renit saw a fleet of Abbey ships near that island that's rumored to be a prison. Just a little bit later, they saw a pirate ship speeding away from the area where the Abbey ships were headed. Well, that was definitely us. Guess it isn't that easy to hide the truth. There was some talk a while ago about prisoners' bodies washing up on shore at Port Renit. So that story sounds plausible, at least. It does. And here I thought I was safe. So where did the Lord of Calamity go? The Abbey needs to get their act together and put that monster down already. Go ahead. Talk all you like. Because <laughs> I'm standing right here. Okay, we got one more scene here. Let me see. I saw an Abbey ship heading toward the Sea of No Return. I wonder what they're doing. They've made that whole area off limits. The guild got an order from the Abbey telling us to stay away. They're being nice and careful, and taking precautions to keep the secret of Hexen Isle just that. Yeah, but order or not, no one here is stupid enough to try to sail there. I am. It's said that compasses go dead, and monsters from the deep appear to swallow ships whole. Whatever the case, ships really have sailed there to never return. Everyone knows that the Sea of No Return is bad news. Come to think of it, I heard a ship from some other town strayed into those waters and got attacked by a dragon. A dragon? <laughs> you sure they didn't just get a bad case of the Corsair Scourge and dream up the whole thing? Well, that was my reaction, but again, the Abbey did tell everyone to stay away, so something must be there. Whatever it is, 
We'd all best leave it be. The Sea of No Return. What a poetic name. For the Malachim taken there, that poem is a tragic one. Everywhere the Abbey sets foot ends up the same. True enough. All right. Well, I guess we're going to end the episode here, and next time we're going to head off possibly to fight Eifried. That should be interesting and not at all depressing and horribly sad for everyone. But anyway, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!